Hello and welcome to Worship with Chapel by the Sea on Clearwater Beach. My name is Rhonda Blevins. I'm the pastor at Chapel by the Sea and we're so glad that you're worshiping with us today. Now today is the first Sunday in the month of June, which our first Sunday here at Chapel by the Sea, we celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And so I invite you, wherever you may be, to gather up some food and some beverage to, um, to celebrate the sacrament together. Because I'm convinced that had Jesus lived in another time and another place, we might not have had wine and bread, but if he had been in my grandmother's house, he probably would have used moon pie and RC cola. So gather up whatever food and whatever beverage you may have, and together, wherever we may be, we'll celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Now, we also have a lot of online opportunities for gathering together as a church community. If you're having any trouble with that, just contact the church office. We, we've been helping people all along uh, make sure they can have access to Zoom. But here are some of the things that we're offering this week. Comparative religion with Joe Cregan. He's offering that on, on Sundays at 9 a.m. and again on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. And so this is an exploration of other faiths, the symbols, the beliefs, the ideas. So if you've ever been interested in learning more about other religions, here's a great chance to do that. On Mondays at 6.30 p.m., Nikki Walton continues to lead her meditation class via Zoom. On Tuesdays at noon, I'm leading what I've been calling Chapel Chat. It's a chance for connect, to connect with one another and to catch up to see how we're doing. <clears throat> and then our choir continues to meet weekly via Zoom, as well as our, our children meet weekly um, for Sunday school on Zoom. Um, and then our one in-person gathering is on um, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Our walking group meets every week here at the chapel. They walk down the beach and back to get a little exercise and a little fellowship. So please come out Wednesdays, 7 p.m. So welcome to worship. Now these past few weeks have taught us that we don't have to be in a special building or with the church family in person in order to worship. We can worship wherever we are. And so I invite you right now, wherever you may be, to take a deep breath, to find yourself in God's presence because God is with us always. And as we worship together, let us do our part to give God the glory and the honor that God deserves. Let us worship now together. Thank you. 
O Eternal, our Lord, your majestic name is heard throughout the earth. Your magnificent glory shines far above the skies. From the mouths and souls of infants and toddlers, the most innocent, you have decreed power to stop your adversaries and quash those who seek revenge. When I gaze to the skies and meditate on your creation, on the moon, stars, and all you have made, I can't help but wonder why you care about mortals, sons and daughters of men, specks of dust floating about the cosmos. But you placed the Son of Man just beneath God and honored him like royalty, crowning him with glory and honor. You ordained him to govern the works of your hands, to nurture the offspring of your divine imagination. You placed everything on earth beneath his feet, all kinds of domesticated animals, even the wild animals in the fields and forests, the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea, all the multitudes of living things that travel the currents of the oceans. O Eternal, our Lord, your majestic name is heard throughout the earth. Please join me in prayer. Teach us what we yet may be, O Lord, we pray. We dedicate these moments to find ourselves in your presence, to be transformed by your spirit moving in and through us. O creating God, empower us to be co-creators with you, working through your power to create a world of truth, justice, goodness, and mutual respect. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. <clears throat> o God of all creation, maker of heaven and earth, author of all that is or ever will be, you set the stars in the sky, 
cause the planets to rotate around the sun, the moon to illumine the evening sky. And you know each lily of the field, each seagull, each pelican, every blade of grass, every fish, every cloud, every grain of sand. And you know us. You know our worries and our concerns. You know our joys and our sorrows. You remember our names. You count our every breath, for you are God. Forgive us when we fail to recognize you in all that is. When we call some parts of your creation good, but label other works of your hands bad, And when we forget to remember your presence in the darkness as well as in the light, whisper to us your words of love and assurance and help us to be less afraid. Shake us loose, O Lord, from animosity born of fear of the other and help us stand with the marginalized and the oppressed. And when we don't understand, and even more so when we don't want to understand, because understanding would challenge our assumptions. Grant us holy discomfort and stir our hearts to compassion and our hands to justice. Send your spirit, O Lord, to draw us out of insular apathy that we might seek first your kingdom. As we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen Good morning, I'm Donna Dennis. I'm the chair of the Congregational Life Committee. And although we cannot gather in fellowship in the usual ways, and it it seems like our work may be a little less obvious, it's ever more essential that we support the work of the chapel. To do so, there are several ways. You can mail or drop your gift off right here at the church. You can give online at chapelbythesea.net. Text GIVE to the number on your screen right now. You can sign up for automatic giving. The form is on the GIVE page on our website. Thank you for your generosity. Far if he'll agree. 
Our scripture lesson today is from Genesis chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, Let there be light! And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Well, today I begin a sermon series for this summer I'm calling The Summer Between. Adventures in liminality. Now, liminality is, you can think of it as a threshold. It's between one stage and another. It's liminal space or liminal time between. And I think the summer of 2020, we are living in liminal time. It seems to me that we are between a number of things, probably most readily available to us is thinking of being in between coming out of lockdown with the pandemic and before what some experts say might be a resurgence in the fall. We're, we're living between those, those two peaks in the curve, right? And there are other ways that we are in between, that we are in living in liminal space. But before we get too far into that, I want to think about creation itself as liminal time and liminal space. Now, we already read together that on the first day, God created light. But let's remind ourselves what else happens in this very first chapter of the book of Genesis. On the second day, God created the sky. On the third day, God created the sea and the earth with all kinds of plants And on the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon and the stars. On the fifth day, God created the birds of the air and the creatures of the sea. And on the sixth day, God created land animals as well as humankind. And on that sixth day, God looked around, saw all that God had made, and God said, it is very good. And then on the seventh day, God took a staycation. So all of that happened in those six days, according to Scripture. Now, we could kind of debate whether we're going to take it literally or not, but I'm not too interested in that today. I'm more interested in what happened before the first day of creation when God created light. The Bible tells us that that there was a formless void and that darkness covered the face of the earth. A formless void, like how I think about my husband looking at me sometimes when I talk to him. Or you can think about my teenager's bedroom. That's definitely a formless void. Or if you prefer a more refined example, you might think about a lump of clay before the skilled potter makes something beautiful out of it. Formless void. Other translations use the words desolate, barren, waste. The word in the Hebrew is, I like it, it rhymes, tohu wabohu. Tohu wabohu. The, the, the writer kind of, I think, intentionally made it rhyme. Tohu wabohu, formless void, or in modern Hebrew, simply chaos. So what was before light and all that is? There was chaos, tohu wabohu. Now, we know a little something about chaos, don't we? I think of chaos, there's kind of three kinds of chaos uh, that I think about. There's kind of natural chaos occurring in the natural world. There's internal chaos that happens inside of us. And then there's civic chaos, isn't there? Let's go back and look at natural chaos, like, like a pandemic is natural chaos. And think about all the upheaval that this kind of natural, within the natural world, all the upheaval that that has caused us. 
chaos in the natural world. And then those of us who live in Florida, we know something about natural chaos every hurricane season, don't we? The chaos of of gearing up to the hurricane, the chaos sometimes that's caused after the hurricane. Or like last night, I got my husband and I are busy paint. We're in a painting project right now, so we're busy painting, and we get kind of buzzers going off all over the house, and and there's a tornado warning. And so we kind of gather up ourselves and our kids, and there's only one tiny little room in our house that's a safe room. And so we gather up the kids and the cat, and by the time we finally get everybody gathered up into our little tiny safe room, Then we get another buzzer. Oh, never mind. (laughs) But in those five or six minutes where there was a tornado warning, there was all kinds of chaos, natural chaos, chaos from the natural world. Then there's internal chaos, isn't there, inside of ourselves. I think there's a lot of confusion within us these days as we don't know who to trust or who to believe or what news to listen to when life is disrupted and we don't know what to do next or or where to turn, there's confusion. That's internal chaos. And then there's lots of fear and anxiety. Uh, We are living in an age of anxiety, I believe, and there's been lots of anxiety around this pandemic, Uh, not only the pandemic and becoming ill or or dying from from it, there's also the anxiety around an economic shutdown and what that means. There's lots of anxiety. This is internal chaos. And then let's talk about civic chaos for a moment. The protests that have erupted after George George Floyd was killed at the hands of a police officer. There's been civic unrest. His protests have turned to riots and then the government's response and then over response and there's lots of civic unrest, civic chaos. And then It's 2020. It's an election year. Every four years, we go through civic chaos when there's a presidential election, don't we? As as the other side kind of drums up things for us to be angry or upset about, there's civic chaos. We're, We're in 2020, and this is a year of chaos. All we need now are something like murder hornets to complete the, complete the, wait, what? What's that? Oh, there are more murder hornets now too. Okay, all right. So there's that. There's murder hornets on top of all of that. 2020, the year of chaos. If you agree with me that this is a time of great chaos, and, and maybe even if you don't, I wonder why we, and maybe I'm speaking for myself here, but, but maybe not, why we are surprised when order devolves into chaos. Why is it that we're surprised by that when creation itself was born out of chaos? That's what we learned in the very first chapter, in the very first book of the Bible, that before there was anything, there was tohu wabohu, chaos. (laughs) But God didn't leave it that way, right? Because God came out of that chaos and said, let there be light. And so the beginning point of creation and all that is. This week I listened to a TED talk uh, delivered by a physicist. It was about chaos theory, which is kind of a scientific term. You may know about the butterfly effect, uh, if that rings a bell, the chaos theory. And he was suggesting that there are benefits to chaos. So I was interested in hearing about what he thought some of the benefits of chaos might be. And he used the simple example of the human heart. The human heart beating rhythmically, right? Bum, 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 bum. He says that people who study evolution suggest that the fact that our human heart isn't always at a nice resting pace, that sometimes it speeds up, that it gave us an evolutionary advantage. And he uses this example. Imagine that we are hunter-gatherers out foraging for food, and our heart 
is that a resting heart rate? Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. And then we spot a saber-toothed tiger. What does our heart do then? Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, it enables us then to flee from that predator, giving us an evolutionary advantage. So our heart is kind of a chaotic system. It's resting most of the time. We need it to be at rest for our normal daily activities. But then sometimes we need it to speed up to help us survive. This is what this scientist called the edge of chaos. Somewhere between order and disorder. The edge of chaos. And he suggested that the edge of chaos may be the optimal setting for the desired outcome, the edge of chaos. But we, most of us, we don't like chaos, do we? We eschew chaos. We don't want chaos. We want order. We want rhythm. We want systems that go nicely and smoothly. We don't like the chaos. But let me remind us all of this. That in the beginning, there was chaos. And guess who was right in the middle of that chaos? None other than God. And so I want to suggest that whenever we experience chaos, internally or externally in the world around us or some combination of both like I feel like the world is doing right now we're experiencing this chaos I want to suggest that God remains in that chaos that God is right there in the mix of it and what is God doing well we might not know but I'll tell you this God is doing something can I get an amen all right, I got a few amens. God is in the chaos, and God is doing something right there in the chaos. We may not know what it is. We may not understand because we can't predict or see into the future, but, but God takes chaos and creates everything. We ourselves, we are children. We are born out of chaos, as is all creation. God's right there in the mix doing something. And what's our role well, we are called to be co-creators with God. So we find ourselves in the chaos, right there with God in the chaos, and we are co-creating whatever is next. And what's next? Well, if the book of Genesis is any indication, what comes next is light. And so what's our role in the chaos, with God in the chaos, to co-create with God whatever comes next? Our role is to simply Shine a light into the darkness. So what does that look like here on planet Earth? Here's an example. This week I was talking to a friend who has a, a good friend that lives in Minneapolis, real close to where the riots happened. And this friend said that, that, that after the first night of rioting, that, that he and, and, and other neighbors got together in daylight in a public park to try to figure out what to do to protect their own homes as well as their whole neighborhood. And so neighbors who had never spoken to each other before kind of got together and decided what to do, and they decided this, that they would resist the rioters together in nonviolent ways. And so they, they got buckets full of water, so whenever there was a fire that might break out, they could, they could rush to the fire and pour buckets of water on the fire. And they determined that, that the rioters were, were causing havoc only in dark spaces. So they decided to light up the neighborhood. So turning on porch lights, wherever there was a dark alley or, 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 or a dark place, they would kind of get any shop lights that they might have and shine into dark places in the neighborhood. Houses that were empty, they got their Christmas lights. They, they got their Christmas lights and put on places that, that weren't lit up. They were doing, they were shining a light into that darkness there in Minneapolis. They were co-creating with God light in the middle of, of darkness. And so this week, maybe there'll be more chaos. Maybe there'll be more chaos in, in, in civic 
areas. Maybe there'll be more chaos internally. And all we are to do, children of God, is to co-create with God a world where there is light. So let us shine our lights into the darkness wherever we may find it this week. And for an extra reminder of how that might look, I turn to a prayer of St. Francis. You probably know this prayer. It might help us understand what it looks like to shine light into the darkness. Will you pray with me? Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Now today is Communion Sunday here at Chapel by the Sea, the first Sunday of the summer between, and so we celebrate this sacrament of Holy Communion. And with that, I invite you to imagine Jesus there in the upper room, that liminal space between his life and his death. Chaos whirling around Jesus as the Sanhedrin make their plans. And Judas is thinking about his 30 pieces of silver. Jesus seemed to know that something beautiful would emerge up out of that chaos. And may we know something beautiful can emerge from this present chaos as well. Will you pray with me? Thank you, creating God, for light and for darkness, for land and sea, for earth and sky, for everything that is and ever will be. Thank you for these gifts of food and drink, your body, your blood. We give you thanks. May they be for us a reminder of your presence in both chaos and order, calm and storm, life, and death, a reminder of your redeeming work in all of it. Bless these elements of this Holy Communion from pantries and refrigerators across Clearwater and around the world, a taste of divinity in a time of chaos. Amen. And so in that liminal space that we now call the upper room, Jesus took bread And after giving thanks, he broke it, and he offered it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he offered it to his disciples, saying, this is my blood poured out for you. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray together. Jesus, through your death and resurrection, you reconciled the world to God. 
And through your example, you have shown us a way to peace. Give us strength as the people of God to be channels of peace in the world, shining your light, demonstrating your love, and always longing for that moment of eternal communion when we shall see you again. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in worship with Chapel by the Sea today. And now receive this word of benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. you forever.